After such an encouraging performance and result in the Mazda MX-5 Cup last week, I didn't want to start a new low-fuel motorsport Assetto Corsa race week anywhere else. Last time out, I raced the long, wide and fast-flowing Mugello circuit, but I'm in for an entirely different proposition today, Brands Hatch Indy. Not only that, I'm in the top split too, and I've qualified well down the grid. I'll be starting from P17 with a lap time that's more than one second slower than the top three. Now, this will undoubtedly be my toughest Assetto Corsa test yet on LFM. Will I rise to the occasion? Let's get down to the track and find out. The red lights are out and we are go. And I was a little bit too enthusiastic on the throttle there as we got away. I lit the rears up, almost spun. Thankfully, I've managed to keep it facing in the right direction, but that will cost us some speed on the charge to T1. Well, I've got Rodrigo Garcia Marco to my outside, so I will have to keep it tight through Paddock Hill. And Marco has breezed past. We've lost one position. We're down into 18th. But at least my tighter line through T1 has helped me go more defensive into Druid's hairpin. There was no room at all for anyone to sling a move up the inside there. We will get challenged around the outside by Stephen Dollymore, but we just about keep our nose ahead of Dollymore coming through Graham Hill Bend for the first time. Well, I did find myself a pretty smooth line through that corner. As a result, I'm carrying more speed than Marco in front, but I just have to lift off the gas slightly. The track far too crowded to try a move at this stage of the race. The yellow flags are out though. We've got a spinner on the infield and I might have just given Dollymore a gift as well because I wasn't as tight as I would have liked into clearways there. It left a gap, only a small one, but it was big enough for Dollymore to barge through and make the pass. And it looks like I've picked up another position as well with the car in the pit, so I'm actually up into P17 despite Dollymore taking that spot. Look at Dollymore though, he bangs doors with Marco, that sends Marco out into the gravel and Paddock Hill Ben. Well, I think we've lost him completely, so that's us up into P16, it may be P15 because Dollymore's not able to make the apex at Druid's hairpin. We're on the inside now, we're going to be side by side down the hill, however Dollymore's going to have the advantage and he closes the door into Graham Hill Bend. He is offline though, that may give us another opportunity to put him under some pressure. Once again we're alongside, but once again I suspect I might get squeezed out. Dollymore does leave me room, but I've still got to ride the curb and you don't want to be doing that in these Masters. Around clearways then, approaching the end of lap two. Yellow flags are out, we've lost another driver on the infield. That was Peter Jan Hooks, who started P6. So we find ourselves up into the top 15, but under serious pressure now from Damien Pristupa. Will Pristupa try and make a move up the inside into Paddock Hill Bend? I'm going to take a slightly more defensive entry to try and discourage him. And it looks like it might have worked. Pristupa backs off a little bit, and now he's got problems of his own with Francesco Oranusu challenging him. Oranusu coming in really hot around the outside. He's never going to get that stopped. So that gives me a little bit of breathing room behind. I can concentrate on Dollymore ahead again as we approach Graham Hill Bend. Dollymore's a bit wide. The rear steps out. Is he going to lose it? Oh, yes, he is. We anticipated that perfectly. Lifted at exactly the right time to get past. We actually picked up two positions there. There must have been someone else off in the grass as well. So as we approach the end of lap three, we find ourselves up into P13. Make that P12. They are dropping like flies. Owen Risk was in the gravel to the left. Well, I've been waiting to get a chance for a breather and check out the replay of some of what went down. I think we finally might get that opportunity now. We're actually in P11 as we start lap four. We must have passed someone else in the pits. But so much to unpack from these opening few laps. I'm amazed it took until the end of lap one for us to lose a driver. The unfortunate first crasher was this yellow Mazda of Clement Sadusak. Now Sadusak qualified seventh on the grid, but he gets a nudge from behind and is spun around through clearways. Now, while that was happening, I lost a position to Stephen Dollymore, and Dollymore was in no mood to hang around here. He tries to move up the inside of Rodrigo Marco through Paddock Hill Bend. He barges Marco out into the gravel. Poor old Marco rejoins at the back of the pack. Then, towards the end of the second lap, we see an almost identical incident at Clearways. This time, it's Peter Jan Hoekstra who gets clipped from behind. Hoekstra was running in P6, so he is the biggest casualty of this race so far. Then, at the start of the third lap, Dollymore gets it all wrong through Graham Hill Bend. I react quickly, I adapt my line and get past safely. While that happened, there was another crasher off to the grass on the left. We didn't even see it at the time, but it was Mikel Peps just taking too much of the grass on exit, which sends him across track and into the barrier. Then at the end of the third lap, another clearways instant, and yet another driver being tagged from behind. This time it's Owen Risk dispatched into the sand. 
We're returning to the live action at one quarter race distance. There's now a two second gap back to Pristipa in 12th behind. So I've got no pressure in my rear view mirror. Instead, I'm concentrating on trying to reel this pack in front in. Slowly but surely, I'm creeping ever closer to them. Zolza Klenci is the driver right in front of me. He's just 0.6 of a second in front now. And we're going to close right in through Druid's hairpin. This is the closest we've been. And I've managed to force my way into contention for a top 10 finish here. This is way beyond what I thought was possible at the start of this race when I began down in P17 and well off the pace. But we seem to be getting more competitive lap by lap here at Brands Hatch Indy. It's not very often I get anywhere near the leading 10 when I race in the top split. So this is encouraging. Look at Seklenci in front. He was sideways through clearways. Ty and speedway style. It's going to cost him some speed. So this is a great opportunity for us to get into the top 10. We're side by side. Now we are going to have the outside line into Paddock Hill Bend. But we've got the speed. We may be able to get to the apex before. If I'm in any doubt at all, I'll leave space on the inside. But no, we do get to the turn first. We've made the pass stick. We've got a car length advantage so immediately I'll sweep over to the defensive line just to close off that gap on the inside. Great racing here at Brand Sash and we find ourselves into the top 10 thanks to this mistake from Seklenci. He's sideways through clearways. That rear really stepped out. It cost him a load of speed down the start finish straight. I was able to capitalise around the outside. I get to the apex first and get the job done. We're back to the live action then a couple of laps later and I'm having no joy at all when it comes to closing in on the pack in front. Instead, I'm having to deal with Seklenci behind and I make a big mistake going into clearways there. I get a bit of a slide on. It opens up a gap on the inside and it costs me exit speed. So that is going to invite Seklenci to challenge. Now I'm in two minds of what to do here. Do I defend and send him out wide or do I stay wide and try and carry more momentum through the corner? I choose the first option. I'm going to defend. So I'm really tight into the corner but Seklenci she has read it perfectly. He has done me up here. He took a wider entry, a quicker exit, and he's going to make a move up the inside. Now, can I stay alongside him around Druid's hairpin? No, I can. So, Seklenci back into the top 10. We're down to 11th. And yeah, that defensive line really didn't work in the end, did it? I held it tight, hoping that I'd close the corner off. But of course, it left me open to attack, exiting the corner down the hill. Seklenci did just that. Moves up the inside. Nothing I can do at this point. And it's a great move from Seklenci. He read that absolutely perfectly. Well, at the moment, I'm finding it hard to see where the opportunity is going to come from for me to get back past Seklenci. He is defending really well and he's got great pace. He was much smoother than me too through Paddock Hill there and that has given him an extra couple of tenths, but we will close back in on him again through Druid's hairpin. Now, cast your eye further down the track at Graham Hill Bend. There is a battle that is turning physical. Well, that is the fight for seventh position between Anton Van Sommeren and Edin Kecik. And it is Van Sommeren who span out there. So we're back into the top ten. Let's check out a replay and see what happened. Van Sommeren in the green car making a move up the inside. It's a forceful move and a big hit. And it's one he doesn't survive. Kecik, on the other hand, does keep it on track, but he loses a position to Keith Holt. Halfway point of the race then. We've got Holt in seventh, Kecik in eighth, Seklenci in ninth and me in tenth. Van Sommeren managed to rejoin in 11th and he's only one second behind. Now given his pace in qualifying I suspect he'll be bothering me before too long. Van Sommeren started P4 on the grid so he was one of the front runners. And if by any chance he doesn't close in on me through sheer pace he's going to get the opportunity to now anyway because I'm right on the tail of Seklenci and it feels like he's slowing me down a little bit. Is there a way through? No there isn't. I've just got to lift off the gas. So yeah I think I've got to get past Seklenci as quickly as possible here if I'm going to stand any chance of preserving the top 10 position because Van Sommeren now is looking menacing. He is breathing down my neck as we begin the charge down the start finish straight. He's flashing his headlights. Now that's going to make me even more determined to defend this position. Once again, I'm in two minds about defending. This didn't work the last time I tried it, but I'm committed to the line now. However, it looks like Van Sommeren is going to take the exact same strategy that Seklenci took a few laps ago. He has pulled the same move and forced his way up the inside. Seklenci defends. That might help me out. It may just block the way for Van Sommeren. No, it doesn't. He barges his way through. He's up into P10. Once again, we find ourselves back down to P11. Look at Van Sommeren, though. He Takes it up the inside of Seklenci through Graham Hill Bend. Seklenci had to get off the gas there. That's an opportunity for me. We're side by side, but I've got the pace advantage. I don't want to be coming into this section too wide, and I don't because I've got the momentum to make the pass. We're back into the top 10 once again. This is great.
great stuff. But watch Van Sommeren make this aggressive move up the inside into Graham Hill Bend. It's a brave pass there. And Seclenci had no other option but to back out of it. And that gave me the position. So incredibly, we are in the top 10 and we're approaching three quarters race distance. This is looking good. I've managed to gap Seclenci behind. He's now more than two seconds back. Meanwhile, in front, it looks like there's been a coming together between Keith Holt and Edin Ketchik. Ketchik has gone. So yeah, we find ourselves up into P9. Let's check out the replay. And it's another similar clearways incident. Holt from behind tags the rear of Ketchik and spins him round into the gravel. Well, it's been an impeccably clean race from my point of view. We have seen some questionable moves into clearways in particular, but I'm really happy with the way it's going here. Like I said earlier in the race, it's so rare that I'm anywhere near the top 10 when I race in a top split race. So this feels good. Now, I've still got a glimmer of hope of catching Keith Holt in eighth, but I've just come across this bat mark and then pit at the wrong time right into Graham Hill Bend. It costs me some speed and I drop a bit further back. We're going to jump forward now to the final minute of the race. I have started to close back in on Holt, but I'm still 1.1 seconds behind. Now, I know I'm running out of time, so I'm pushing as hard as I can here, and I push too hard through Graham Hill Bend. I'm out onto the gravel, and that pretty much costs me my chance chance of 8th position, or does it look to the left? Van Sommeren is in the barrier and we do find ourselves up into 8th position with one lap to go. Here's a replay, Van Sommeren just riding that kerb on the inside and I've said it time and time again, you don't want to be doing that in these Mazdas. And that was how it finished, we are going to cross the line to take P8. Now I don't qualify for top splits in low fuel motorsport very often and when I do, I'm never near the top 10, so this is a fantastic result. I am delighted with this one. Yeah, let's take a look at the classified results then and pay particular attention to my fastest lap of 52.7 in the race. Now my qualifying time was a 53.2, so I've gone half a second quicker from qualifying all the way down in P17 thinking that I didn't have a hope of a top 10 finish. I have competed here, which is really encouraging. Well, I didn't think I was gonna top last week's performance in Mugello, but this series just keeps getting better and better. What a race. I hope you've enjoyed it as much as I did. Thanks for watching.